what's going on guys welcome back to another video on today's video i'm going to be touching on the topic of the infamous ict judas swing everyone wants to know what is a judas swing uh, when does the Judas Swing happen? How can we identify the Judas Swing? How can we benefit from the Judas Swing? And I'm actually going to be answering all of those questions for you and more. Stay tuned. Don't forget to subscribe, follow the channel, and we'll get right to it. These videos are meant for educational purposes only. Any trades taken in the financial markets are under your own discretion. The information taught should be demoed and only taken to live accounts under your own responsibility. E is profitable, will not be held liable for anything you do with the information presented. All right, guys. So as far as the Judas Swing goes, I want you to think about the Judas Swing in the same manner as the individual was uh, in the Bible. And I won't get too much into it. But if you do some research, you will find that the word Judas or the person Judas or Judah uh, can be associated with the word betrayal. And that's exactly what I want you to think about when we're reviewing the charts and when we're looking for those moves that are inducing people before the real move happens all right so to start what is the judas swing so the judas swing is the run on stops and or the return to an inefficiency before the real move happens so again the run on stops means that the uh, algorithm is going after people that are moving their stop losses right so if, if there's people that are um going short and the market keeps breaking down lower before the market continues to break down lower it's going to have the tendency to reach up to take out those that are moving their stop losses before then uh, you see a continuation all right so another reason why the judas swing happens is because price might want to reach to an inefficiency right an imbalance fair value gap right or volume imbalance reach an inefficiency before a continuation in the direction that it was headed in the first place all right so in order for you to begin to understand what is the judas swing all right you need to understand why does the judas swing happen so again, it happens to allow, allow smart money to take out the liquidity that was created before a continuation move occurs. It also allows smart money to reach back to an inefficiency in price before the continuation of that move. Okay, so that's pretty self-explanatory and I'm actually going to show you what that is here in a chart. Now, before I do that, you need to understand who benefits from the Judas Swing smart money benefits from the judas swing right because they are able to uh, take out liquidity and they're able to get into a better position uh, for that continuation to occur but guess what they aren't the only ones that can benefit from the judas swing you can also benefit from the judas swing if you learn how to trade uh, with smart money if you learn how to recognize these moves ahead of time then you can also participate and part of this Judas swing. All right, so the next question that most people wanna know is how can we identify a Judas swing versus an actual market structure shift, okay? So the way you do that is by reviewing higher time frame price action and determining where is higher time frame liquidity at, right? So you're gonna go into the daily, the four hour, the one hour, and you're gonna view a higher time frame a market and see where is liquidity what was taken and what is left to take right by you reviewing higher time frame price action and looking at the market from a macro perspective right it allows you to see where is the market reaching for it allows you to not get fooled by the judas swing and in you thinking that there was a market structure shift Okay, so how can we find the Judas swing? And I'm going to go over this with you on the charts. It all depends on mostly on time of day, right? You need to think about when is volume at its highest, right? That's normally around 930 when the market opens, when you have the most people 
putting in their money in the market. Well, that would be ideally the best time for a Judas swing to happen, right? Because that is where the most people are active in the market, right? So the Judas swing will be uh, found um, based on time of day. All right. So think of the Judas swing again as a fake directional run. Uh, think of the Judas swing as a lure to get people to get in. Think of the Judas swing as a way for them to take out liquidity. Think of the Judas swing as a way for them to mitigate or reach to an inefficiency. All done with the intent to continue with this higher time frame direction. Okay, so again, a Judas swing can happen as a long swing. It can be uh, to attack an external um, liquidity area before it continues. A Judas swing can also be a short attack, right? Attacking internal liquidity before a continuation. All right, guys, so we're going to go ahead and take a look at that now here on the charts. And uh, we're going to find some good examples, right? So let's take a look at this area here, right? So we see that. Um, this was March, uh, Monday to six. We see that the market was breaking down. The market was bearish, right? So the market could have very easily at this point could have just continued down here and kept breaking down further, right? So why did the market come up here? And I'll go ahead and highlight this area for you. Why did the market, what was the need for the market to reach up there? That's what we call a Judas swing. That is what a Judas swing looks like, right? It is the algorithm going against its higher time frame directional bias, right? Because the market wants to be bearish, but before it, it, it continues its bearish run, it needs to take out liquidity that is sitting up here. Now, think about this. Think about how many traders are moving their stop losses. So let's say if we if we have a, a bunch of traders like this, all going short, and they all got in, let's say they all got into some, some pretty decent positions up here. As soon as the market starts to break down, a lot of traders have the tendency to do what? To move their stop loss, right? So this area here, right, that I'll highlight in green, this entire area here has a lot of liquidity. Right. Because you have people that are moving their stop losses as the market is breaking down. That's number one. Number two, this area here is also forming resistance. So when you think about the traders that trade um, retail, the retail way, right, they see that the market is struggling in this area. So they think, hey, this is a high resistant area. So guess what? Now you have even more traders going in short here, putting their stop loss here, putting, you know, putting their stop loss here, here, whatever. They're going short, right? In addition to that, right? What happens is you also have retail traders that are looking for a break and retest, right? So as soon as the market breaks through this resistance area, you also have traders doing what? Traders going long. You have traders going long here. Okay. You have traders going long. Right. So what so so what that means is that is that this area has a ton of money, guys. So this is what the Judas swing does and it can do it as a short term uh, liquidity run. It can run up to um, reach an inefficiency. It can be a higher time frame Judas swing. There's you know, it happens in different time frames. But again, the intent is the same. It's either is it's either happening to take out liquidity or it's happening to reach an inefficiency before it continues. And what do I mean by that is let's imagine if there was a fair value gap or an imbalance up here. Well, the market is reaching up there to touch that inefficiency, mitigate that inefficiency before it continues down. Sometimes it could do both. It can do that and take out liquidity before a continuation. Right. So then we talked about how can we find uh, the Judas swing and how do we know it's not a. Uh, a market structure shift, right? Because someone can look at this and say, well, the market shifted in structure and now we're back bullish. 
Well, again, you have to go up to higher time frame analysis, right? So if you go up to the one hour, et cetera, and you see that there is actual market structure being shifted on the higher time frame, and then you want to find where is um, liquidity left to be taken, right? So in, in this case, this is external liquidity, which is what left to be taken here. Right. And if you notice, if you see that liquidity was already taken for buy side, let's see, that was liquidity for buy side. This was liquidity for buy side, etc. Right. So then you see the market structure, the market breaking down, then you know that it's going to target sell side liquidity. So whenever you see these impulsive moves up like this, especially when this is happening during the market open during when the market opens then those are all clues those are all things letting you know that hey this is not a market structure shift and we're back bullish instead this is a judas swing and all we're doing is we're taking our liquidity and then we're going to continue down in our bearish move okay so how do you participate in this so again number one you have to know your higher time frame you have to pay attention to what's happening on the daily the four hour the one hour Number two, you have to know where liquidity is in the market. Where is liquidity? What was taken? Where do you think the market is going next? All of that has to be analyzed, right? There is no quick cookie cutter way for me to explain that to you. You have to have chart time and be able to see that and, and understand where you see that the, the money is sitting, right? Number three, um, look at the market from a retail perspective. What are they looking at, right? Resistance, support, double tops, double bottoms, um, break and retest, all that stuff. That's how you're able to see, okay, so I see this forming here. This is uh, resistance. And then now I'm, I'm connecting that with time of day, right? So now the market opened, right? So let's go to the market open, let's say around 9.30, right we can do let's say from 9 30 to like 9 30 to 10 so what what did the market do around 9 30 to 10 it's running and it's not just within that time frame you you got to see like the entire picture of what's in front of you right so you can see i'll try to mark this for you you can see what the market did here it's swinging up right it's all inducing what buyers right people are getting into buys here is inducing them right it's taking out liquidity at the same time right you're taking out all that liquidity you're inducing those that are that that are that believe in break and retest right so you're taking those people out to then do what flip down and go the opposite way right so that's what it does it's betraying you it is making you believe that it's going one way but instead, it wants to go the opposite way. So again, this example, you will find the Judas swing, you will find over and over. Okay, but again, it's something that you guys have to analyze on your own. And, and again, you will notice that most times this is happening during market open, right? So again, here, the market is inducing buyers, and then it reverses on you, and then it does its real direction. Right. So, again, that's what I want you guys to study going forward. This is, again, a very short video, just giving you a brief explanation on the Judas swing. But again, um, look at higher time frame, look at where liquidity sits and then look at what what is the market doing during the um, New York open. Right. Because most times, again, that is where the most volume is in the market. And because that is where the most volume is in the market, then the uh, algorithm intentionally is going to go against its um, real direction to induce sellers or buyers if it's going the other way to then reverse on everyone and take them out okay again guys thank you for watching i hope the video was insightful if you have any other questions or any other topics that you would like for me to go over do not hesitate to reach out to me thank you